Iris, we've just seen the first two episodes of the newly rebooted Roni with the all new cast. You've been excited about this one for a while, so I'm curious to get your thoughts. <laughs> did it live I up have. to the hype? Oh my god, it totally did. I was so excited. <laughs> Just the the freshness, the beat, the like New York City, the all of it. Like it was so perfect. I was so happy to kind of like finally see it come to fruition, if you will. Yeah, honestly, what? I'm on the same boat. Yeah, I think like probably our first podcast episode, we talked about like the new Roni, and I think I said that I wasn't super excited about it because like the ogs are so iconic but no honestly like i'm i'm in i believe the hype like the (laughs) way that they started it introducing all of the girls i thought that it was like so natural i love that it's just like it's like an effortlessly diverse cast like i think that it does feel like you're just kind of experiencing more of like what new york is without them kind of trying to like shove something at you or like manufacture it a little bit Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm actually like I really enjoyed the first two episodes. I'm pretty excited to see where it goes. I think the first thing that I really noticed about it was it's finally taking place not in the Upper East or Upper West Side. Like, they are downtown. They are hanging out in Washington Square Park. They are in Brooklyn. Like, yeah, you know, we're seeing some other parts of New York, which is really exciting. How are you feeling about the ladies? Like, do you have any standouts kind of at this point in, like, either good or bad way? Yeah, I do. Honestly, like, I do really like the ensemble cast. I I don't think there's anyone that I, like, have a, I don't know, like, that I super dislike right off the bat, which I guess is good. Bryn is obvious, like, she's a lot. Like, she's, like, a, but to me, she brings the perfect amount of kind of, like, Stasi mixed yeah. with, I don't know, who else would she like, be she's mixed with? Like, she's a little with? chaotic, yeah. Yeah, like, like she's, she's chaotic. A little bit, like, she is. She's a mix of like Stasi with like some Landon, I would say, yeah. from uh, Southern Charm. Oh my god, she does kind of look like Landon. Doesn't I she kept, look like, like Landon? I kept being like she looks like someone, and I don't know who. She also yeah. this is like a super deep take, but she like also kind of looks like that one of those characters from the Goofy movie. <laughs> That's hilarious. She has amazing hair though. I'm like obsessed she does with her hair. It's so hair. nice. Just from her tagline, I was like, you know what? That's good. That's a good one. Yeah. What is it? I you love to me. laugh, but if you but, make, but, me but mad, make me mad, and I'll date, date your dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I feel like I'm going to be here for her. Some people are saying that she feels a bit like she's putting it on for the cameras. And like, yeah, some right. of her confessionals do feel like a little bit kind of rehearsed. But at the same time, like, I feel like she's just like that. Like, she just feels very like bubbly and fun and like going to go like stir up the drama and then kind of like back away from it. <laughs> So I'm excited to to see what she brings. Like when she wasn't in the second episode, like you felt it. Yeah, that's just it. Like I, I am glad that she wasn't in the second episode because I do feel like it let, allowed kind of the other like castmates to kind of like breathe and like for us to get more of their personality. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm definitely excited to have her come into the third season. And oh, sorry, third. <laughs> We're here. We're already in the third season. Yeah, uh, we'll just, I mean that's when it really gets good. This is the third season. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> the three, you know, the classic scene. <laughs> um, but yeah, have her come in for the third episode and just start to like, you know, break up some of the tensions, you know, kind of bring in some of the extra, like a little bit of Juveste Quad that I think she's providing to the group. Um yeah. and kind of like the dynamic in general. I'm very excited for her to come for back. sure. I think my front runner right now is actually Jenna. Um yeah. Jenna mm-hmm. Lyons, because you can't say only her first name. No, 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 no. <laughs> Even the girls don't say her first name. It's kind of funny. Yeah, right. And <laughs> I feel like because I actually saw the episode a little bit late, so I I started to see some of like what people were saying about it first. And I had been Mm -hmm. hearing that, you know, it seemed like she was maybe more reserved and like wasn't fully like accepting the, I don't know, like Real Housewives gig. Um, But I didn't get that at all. I actually found that she was like very vulnerable, very open. She shared like so much about herself, like right off the bat, like the, the genetic disorder that she has and yeah. that you know she was nervous to go into a girl's trip and she like is kind of uncomfortable with like friendships because she didn't see that mod- modeled like I thought that she actually like had a lot of raw moments and like she's like kind of quirky like she definitely gives um oh gosh what's her name like a Carol a little bit yes yeah she definitely reminded me of Carol and also like I think in the way that Carol brought such a fresh energy into the group when she came in in season, season five that Carol came in um like, I feel like Jenna's kind of doing something similar with this group, too. She is, like, a little bit refined, maybe a little bit more quiet. Like, she's a little bit more of a character that we're going to, you know, get to see kind of continue to un- unravel. 
un- yeah, un- prob- <laughs> probably unravel Maybe in unravel. some way. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like you need that. Like you always need a person who's like a little bit outside of the realm of housewives to kind of like usually they'll kind of reflect the average person or like yeah get a little bit less sucked up in the drama i don't know we have yet to see that yet um and she is funny because she actually like they were saying i think i'll watch what happens live like she's obviously like the wealthiest in the group and she's like the one that actually probably has that like housewife not housewife title as an actual housewife but like in the grandeur and like grandiosity and like being well known yeah, yeah. She, she's been to like the Met Gala like she's you know hung out with Beyonce and Solange but so she went to Solange's wedding really <laughs> yeah but that's um, it yeah, so but... you don't expect her to be the one that you're like oh yeah she seems more like relatable yeah <laughs> no it's true um but she has been a really interesting addition to the group I really I really I'm just enjoying her so much I love that she's weird like I think that's yeah. what's great about her I think she's yeah. just weird and wonderful um, I'm also really enjoying Uba. I think that Uba is like hilarious. Um, yeah, and I, and I love amazing. her like outfits are incredible. Oh my god, yes. I love her it's energy. Um, yeah, so I love she's... That she's also like yeah. Are you gonna say this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're so in sync. <laughs> we're so in sync. We just now exactly. I just love that she's Chanel on cousin. I think that's hilarious too. Um, and just goes to show what a small world the housewives live in, too. It's, yeah, and they have so many similarities. Like, they're yeah. so funny. They're both, like, larger than life. <laughs> Literally, both iconic. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. No, yeah. she's really exciting. Um, Aaron is another one that I feel yeah. like was getting heat right from the beginning. Mm. I don't know if this is, like, a controversial take, but, like, I liked her. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I definitely felt like I wasn't going to like her at the end of the first episode. But by the end of the second episode, I was kind of feeling her a little bit more. Um, I thought it was hilarious to have a bit of a Dorinda moment where, like, she's the one hosting all these girls. And they all have kind of, like, ridiculous demands, like, throughout the second episode. Um, yeah. And she, she's just like, oh, yeah, I'm your housekeeper. I'm your camp counselor. I'm your everything. Like, I'm the innkeeper, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, the the... the annoyingness of having to be the person that hosts everybody is obviously an interesting uh, take to get to see again too yeah I don't know she just kind of very like she it really feels like she is being like just her her full self and I like that she's kind of just like blunt um I like the scenes with her family I thought those were sweet and like I don't know I think some of the things she says are, are funny like uh, <laughs> yeah no for sure no I, I really think that it'll be I'm, I'm I think she's the one that I'm probably going to like kind of have to see how she really progresses throughout the season to like fully understand how I'm going to feel about her I think for sure and I definitely think she's going to bring some drama uh do you have any particular feelings about like Sai or Jessel at this point as well I feel like I liked Sai the first episode um and then like actually for both Sai and Jessel I liked them in the first episode and then I feel like their actions in the second episode made me kind of reconsider that. Like, yeah, I mean, I definitely feel that way for Jessel. I know that, like, she's just kind of, like, had those little, we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> we'll get into it. But yeah, um, we, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll dissect all of the drama. But yeah, I just like she was so rude, like, at the end with the whole, like, uh, lingerie. Um, yeah, it was very like she gave, like, a, such a Ramona. That was such a Ramona oh, wow. moment when she was oh, like interesting. going oh, around God. saying like, this is so ugly. Why would anyone get this? <laughs> this is ugly. I hate this. There's nothing worse I've ever put on my entire body in my entire life. Like, Meanwhile, it was you. literally a gift. Um, it was literally a gift. Like you did and, not put it on. You did not come downstairs. Like Yeah. And yeah, side I mean. to like, I don't know, just like the fact that she brought like eight bags to I know. the Hamptons. I don't know. There was just like. I, I just started to be like, I'm not sure as much how I yeah. feel. And maybe it's the influencer thing. And like, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> what were your thoughts oh. on her, on Sai? Uh, I mean, I liked her. I, I think her house is amazing. I think her children are adorable. So cute. Um, yeah, so cute. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to kind of have to wait and see on her as well, I think. Because uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to like feel about her throughout the season um as for Jessel like oh I really I did like her the first episode I love her like her partner like seeing her and her husband I thought it was hilarious the little bit about the Oreo <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then I was like this isn't like a three-year-old Oreo is it and they're like no 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 we go through these like really fast <laughs> and, I was, and I was like seeing those like little like moments of just like 
normalcy in their life, right? Yeah. Um, I like those two. Yeah. I like the moment between Sai and her husband too when they were laughing about cheese gate and like um <laughs> Sai's husband was just like this most yeah. ridiculous thing I've ever heard of like just watching them right. like I feel like those are the moments that usually bring the most kind of like insights into the housewives yeah. is like when you get to see them, you know, in their natural habitats <laughs> like yeah, with their exactly. families. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. That that's kind of what we what we come here for because it does add a little bit of a different dynamic. Obviously, when somebody's in a group, in specifically in like a housewives group, like the tensions can run so hot. What's <laughs> funny is I find it's like so polarizing online. I've seen people who absolutely love it, and yeah. this is like the best thing since sliced bread. And then <laughs> there's people who are like really angry about it and just like don't think that what it should even get to be named roni like it needs oh to have God. a different name and like are you serious it's boring and like yeah so wanted to do a little like rose and thorn of like what oh. did we really like and like it does and maybe it will be our thorns because i don't think i really yeah. agree but i'll tell okay. you some of the criticisms criticisms thorns. that i've seen online <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I definitely, like, as I said, I think before, like, I just love that we're back in New York. Like, I think I was really missing that, like, feeling. I just think yeah. there's something kind of quite iconic, obviously, about the city, but also just, like, about Rhodey itself and, like, being able to kind of be transported back into that world was very exciting for me. Yeah, Whatever. I agree. <laughs> and I actually thought that, like, the group, like, you 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 very quickly start to get a feel for them and, like, I think. like are buying into this like right off the bat it's like yeah. i said i really like the intro i think they were they managed to introduce all the ladies by having the other ones talk about themselves and then kind of show mm -hmm. like glimpses of it i thought that was like really natural they like yeah. put you right into like a fight that actually had happened like mm -hmm. off camera which like i think some people are saying that that feels like i don't know like a little bit faker they would have wanted to see those like fights like cheesegate they have to talk about it after yeah. I actually like it more because it gives almost like a Vanderpump Rules feel where like you feel like you're just plopped right into the middle of drama that's already happening and you're like getting these like hidden glimpses rather than like making everything happen for the camera. Yeah, well, I'm surprised to hear that too because I feel like a lot of the times you don't like Bravo specifically doesn't air certain like things like conversations that maybe happened or things that like went on because they want it to be a little bit bigger for the audience and for the audience to kind of like decide how they want to interpret how everybody's version of events are going. Like I'm thinking of um, uh, back in season one of Beverly Hills when Camille and Kyle have their infamous conversation where Camille interprets whatever Kyle has said to be like, well, why would anybody care about you when Kelsey's not there? Which oh, obviously yeah. like, like chances are it maybe got filmed, right? Like they were there for Las in Las Vegas for the weekend. You know, they were filming that weekend. Like chances are that if they were together, they were being filmed and we just never saw the actual conversation. And so we always had to just decide how we actually felt about it based on like their versions of these two events. And that's kind of, it's purposely big, right? That's true. It's almost not a murder mystery. There's or no murder, omitted. but like it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's like a mystery that we have to and like- un yeah. Like as the Un audience, we're, and yeah. And... Well, the the other thing on this too, though, is that like so it's being highly speculated that this actually was caught on camera, but it was when uh, there was another housewife who was attached to the uh, show, yeah. Um, who ended up, I've heard leaving, and I've also heard being fired. Um, yeah. But they think that it was probably like a group scene, and they couldn't air it because uh, she was there. Possibly, you know what? That would make so much sense because. It was also, if you think about the, um, even the fight about the restaurant. The restaurant Aaron... that they have to beep out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the restaurant that they have to beep out. Aaron is like saying, you know, I had to make a reservation for like a big group of people. And then you guys didn't come. And I was like, well, if only two people didn't come to this reservation, like it wasn't really that big of a reservation, but maybe it was because maybe this person, I think it's Lizzie, is it Savetsky? I want to say so that I'm not I, sure. I don't know. It's not great on pronunciation. I'm sorry. Um, it, like if her and her husband had come along, then that would have made the group like eight people, and to go from eight to six, maybe that would be a big deal. But they, because they're acting like it was just, it ended up just being Aaron and her husband and Jessel and her husband. Right. Yeah. So I maybe, mean, I think there was I think an extra housewife make... in there. 
because apparently she did film a little bit, but it was like early on. Luckily, when yeah. when she did leave. But uh, but yeah, that didn't really bother me. The fact that they were like recounting this story afterwards, I thought it it was I don't know. I thought it was entertaining, and I thought it just made it seem a little bit more real. Like oh, these people have history before the start the show started filming, um, which is actually the second criticism, which is that this group of people are not friends, and that like they're kind of trying to f- make it seem like they're friends. <laughs> Which I could give. Um, yeah. I could give them that. Like, but it's just like so rare, like, that you're just going to find a group of friends who meet, like, the specific criteria of being a housewife, especially Real Housewives of New York, like, mm-hmm. right? That we're just like, oh, they're just all friends. They're all happy to go on camera and, like, have their yeah. lives filmed. Like, you yeah. know, I think that's kind of like a bit of wishful thinking like that's why we're never gonna not go back to Vanderpump Rules in this podcast like <laughs> but like that's why Vanderpump Rules was so iconic yeah. because we, we yeah. were a group of friends even like Southern Charm or like you know even Summer yeah. House at the very beginning like yeah it's very rare to get that um I mean, but yeah what are your th- thoughts on like friendships because some of them yeah. do say that they're friends before that's just it like some of them have obviously like known each other like even if they maybe weren't like friends specifically they're kind of like all within the same industry like Jess- jessa and jenna all oh, what Jess- jessa and <laughs> jenna <laughs> jenna and jessa <laughs> uh we're both kind of like in the fashion world like obviously with Sai being like content creator maybe she was also kind of in there as well uh this lizzie person was also a content creator so they might have like kind of known each other uh aaron i guess is in like real estate and i don't know if you know what uba does i don't know if it's been revealed um she's a model Oh, so right? she's a model. Don't, I okay, think they cool. say she's a model, and then oh, and then she also has. Oh, a I guess hot that makes sauce. sense. Oh, cool! Oh, I love that. Ad. Very yeah. nice. U- Uba hot, <laughs> I think. Uba hot, I love it. Which is which is amazing. <laughs> Uba. But uh, Sai and Bryn. Bryn says that Sai is one of her best friends. That's true. They were best friends before all this. <laughs> yeah, I was that on Ooh. an interview or something. I think that was in an interview. Yes, I I think for like People Magazine or something. So I like revealed that they're like no longer no longer back to you. Yeah, because apparently Bryn can't like, keep a secret. Secret, secret, which I believe. I definitely believe that. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I don't I don't have a problem necessarily with them all not being like best friends. Like, let's be honest. Like, even the housewives for like Beverly Hill, like they weren't best friends. Like Taylor Armstrong knew Adrian. Camille had like kind of like been brought in by Kyle but Kyle like they weren't best friends by any means um I think the person that like maybe had like the most friendships in that group was Adrian but like even then you know like these people weren't all best friends coming into the situation they weren't like a group of like you know five or six girls like hanging out constantly all the time like that's just unrealistic and like even like the the Salt Lake City housewives like they criticize all the time for like not having actually been like that good of friends. So I think as long as the group dynamic is working and it exists, like it doesn't matter what their actual histories are like with one another. Yeah, and it's kind yeah. of fun to like watch them become friends as well, mm-hmm. like, and, and yeah. see where that's going to go. Because sometimes like with a lot of history, also comes like some pretty toxic like toxic situations, like mm-hmm. even that that aren't fun anymore, right? Like when we just yeah. watched like Summer House, where we saw you know Danielle yeah. and Lindsay's friendship literally implode. Like that wasn't yeah. a good time. <laughs> no, that was not a good time. Well, and it even makes me think of like Taylor Armstrong and Kyle Richards, who do become like best friends through the course of the TV show, and that's like super enjoyable to get to watch because you get to like, literally see their friendship form on on tv yeah right were kyle and lisa best friends going into it or did they think, become I friends think they were i think they were already like friends like i don't yeah. know if they were like as close but they were definitely friends. them too oh they were the cutest you know, i loved that them was, together that was a hard one to watch period too <laughs> or bethany <laughs> and carol in new york oh god the well, list goes bethany, on bethany and jill right like oh my bethany god and yeah jill were like literally like their friendship happened and imploded on housewives right like and that was <laughs> yeah Fine. it's yeah it's so true the other thing i really like about this group is that they're they, all um just like they just seem like badass women like they all have I mean, um like their own careers and like yeah i feel like you know a lot of the other ones were like i'm a countess <laughs> and like that's <laughs> what i'm bringing to the table right like and i yeah. love luann luann's amazing yeah 
you know yeah. but like it, it's just like it, it really feels like such a different dynamic and like I mm-hmm. like learning about like what I don't know I like learning about their careers and women yeah. you know having families and doing yeah. their own thing and making their way yeah. in the world and well is not it even, eating cheese is it, apparently <laughs> is it Sai's husband who's like even retired like he's like retired he takes care of the kids and she's the one that's like the breadwinner for the family right like it's such a modern version that's awesome what the the housewives initially kind of was because a lot of like you know ramona always kind of like totally being the one that was like making the money in the family or whatever i have my own money and you know whatever um Mm -hmm. but she was kind of like a bit of an outlier i think in comparison to to a lot of the other housewives yeah that's the one thing i'll give you ramona (laughs) (laughs) okay then the other thing that i read there's a lot of stuff out there yeah. um is uh some people are just saying it's super boring um and, then, and you know what like the like the first few episodes of any franchise is always going to be slower like mm. and i feel like if they popped off right away like it would just yeah. kind of feel fake like it was really hard for me to even go back to season one roni but that's also Ooh, because like yeah it was really old yeah. and like you're watching it's like super grainy and like outdated <laughs> I remember having to be like, no, stick with it. It's really good. It's so good. Yeah. Get there. Yeah, I think I was like, Iris, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are all the curtains looking like this? <laughs> like, yeah. I think the decor in particular was just like so hard to watch. You're like, it oh, was... the 2007, the stuff at all. It was wild. Yeah, especially comparing like Beverly Hills houses to the New York houses. And you're like, really? These are the really rich women of New York. <laughs> No, it's super, it's super fresh and fun. And you know what? Like, I think this is exactly what we needed in like, you know, after I think the one word we used to describe at least last year when we did like a year in review of Bravo was like dark and heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know what? Like we need some lighthearted fights about cheese (laughs) for this to just finally be even like the last season of Roni, like guys, like, let's be honest. Come on. That was a bad season. Like, we deserve some fun. But that's just it. Like, I think when people, and like myself included, like I literally was like, there's so many like like, iconic moments of Roni. Like, we're we're trying to get that back. And like, when you think about it, like that was like the middle seasons were like everything and they were incredible. But like the later seasons were not. And like the last season was dreadful. And it's like, it's such a revisionist history that we just kind of like have forgotten kind Mm -hmm. of the train wreck that's got us here. Yeah, and like, do we want us? Like, I don't think anyone wants to see more of Ramona, like, just basically offending everyone that she possibly yeah. could. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and not just it, like not you know another Sonia storyline about how she drinks too much and yeah. how it's like and like how depressing her life and like that townhouse is and like the way that the townhouse is like dragging her down and like I just ugh. the letters, <laughs> the Morgan letters. That's just it. Like, we're never gonna get. Roni back in the way that it was it's similar to how we're never going to get like reality tv back in the way that it has been right like the the jig is up right people know how to play this game um and like the kind of the innocence that came from early seasons of a lot of these tv shows is not going to exist anymore um i think we yeah. have to just kind of accept that there's, there's a bit of a new way of this working and yeah be ready for this that. is <laughs> Yeah, no, well, that's exactly it. And, like, I don't think it takes away from it at all. Like, I think Roni is always going to have such, like, a special place in, like, everyone's hearts. Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of people are saying, I think that people went into this new season expecting, like, a scary island on episode one. And it's like, you know, we only got scary island on, like, season three. Yeah. To your point about season three. (laughs) Season three three has been the best. (laughs) No, exactly. That's just it. You you can't expect too much. And, like, I think the only, and I've said this time again, time again, um, I think the only series that successfully came out of the bad running was um, BPR. Was, well, <laughs> well, I guess we have BPR too. Uh, for the I'm not biased. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> for the Housewives, it was like Real Housewives of Atlanta, right? Like season one of Real Housewives of Atlanta was the bomb. Like it was so good right off the bat. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew how this was going to work, and it was incredible. And like no other series has been able to catch on that fast really Um, so yeah i shamefully have yet to see atlanta 
Oh my god. I know. I can get booed. I understand if you have to boo me in the comments. <laughs> it's literally like the most and actually it's funny because uh, Nini Leaks did a um an interview with Car- Carlos King this week and like the, the ratings for this series were just absolutely incredible. Like blown away like beyond what any other housewives has ever been able to achieve. Like I think in season six they were saying it got five million or close to five million views per episode. Like it was blowing every other episode season out of the water like no other did, show could compete with them where did atlanta start like where is it in the like hierarchy uh, i think it was the third one to start so i think it was housewives of orange county housewives of new york housewives of atlanta and then beverly hills and maybe J- jersey and then beverly oh hills. jersey I beverly hills. i think that's the order yeah i think so Okay. But still. Yeah, I should probably. I I need to watch it. You always make like references, and I'm just kind of like so good. nod my head. <laughs> but yeah, no, d- like cautiously optimistic. I also it- don't know if like, I'm my expectations were just like so low that I was like really excited about it. <laughs> um, I'm just like I'm not putting too much into it. You know, like I yeah. I want to watch it. I want to be entertained. It doesn't need to like blow me away. Be the best thing that's ever existed in the world. And. I think a lot of people were saying, too, like, it was a little bit unfair because I think that there was a lot going against this season. Like, Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot. Like, people didn't want it to work. So, with that being said, should we start to get into the drama? Yes. Let's get into the drama. So, starting off in episode one, obviously, you know, we have Cheesegate and Restaurantgate. Did you have (laughs) feelings about some (laughs) for these theories, maybe even about, like, which restaurant this might have (laughs) been? So I've heard that the restaurant is Kaj. And I've heard that as well, which I'm kind of surprised by, mainly just because Catch to like Olive or Garden. Catch. People say Catch, and I'm like, is that a different place than Catch? Is, are these I don't two different so. places? I think those are in the same place. I think that might just be accents. <laughs> oh. Um, but like, for okay, so for Bryn to compare something to Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Like, I feel like it has to be something that was, like, Italian, right? Is that just me? <laughs> well, it's more just, like, Olive Garden is, like, like a chain. And yeah. Catch is... Okay, is this the catch that we went to in Vegas that, like, this is the we, catch that we literally spent so much money and we oh, left money. hungry? So so expensive, yeah. they talked about it, like, it was Olive Garden, to which yeah. I was like, oh, my... Like, oh, I... Like, what? That's just it. That's why. That's why I think it can't be Catch because I don't think Catch is like Italian enough. I think it needs to be like Carmine's or yeah. like Carbone or something. And they just haven't said that. And I just wish that like they would come out with it. So but why do you think people? Start? Yeah. And also, why did they beep it out? I don't. I don't know. To maybe to like generate this kind of buzz because we're obviously that's, talking about it, right? That's, like, that's true. But if it is Catch, that I honestly feel personally victimized. <laughs> they were like 2006 they're just like oh like maybe feel like in high school i'm like what literally <laughs> we were in like our late 20s and like we literally left hungry because we couldn't afford to have a full meal and then Let's we went to in and out, out. <laughs> yeah so like they went like are we just peasant all our hamburger instead it was so much better so much more filling <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah i don't understand um yeah, but that was that was interesting. That was kind of the main drama, I feel like, of episode one. I, yeah, I mean the the restaurant thing, I think, was less of like a like driving of the plot. Uh, what sure. was funny though is like it it gave like Ramona taking Bethany Frankel's dress and then saying she didn't have it and then posting oh. a picture of her <laughs> wearing uh, the dress on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, that is. I think I saw someone. I can't make that connection. Uh, I can't take credit for that connection, but I think I saw someone <laughs> posting that um, that was similar to Bryn and Sai, like saying that yeah. they had to leave and then like posting right. pictures that they were out. She's <laughs> um, gay. I thought was funny. I thought that like it was funny that they're literally fighting about, about someone cheese. going, you eat cheese. That's weird. More than anything, what I liked about it was just that, like, we then got so many, like, cheese lovers behind the, like, we got, like, to find out that Jenna's a cheese lover. We found out that Aaron's a cheese lover. I'm, like, loving this cheese lover world that we're now living in. Cause, uh, well, yeah. You know, part of it for those of us who like dare you still. If she actually said that, then I totally would not be 
yeah. on board. Like she's yeah. like the best and how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but more than anything, I do kind of just suspect that it is Bryn like stirring up a little bit of drama. Like I don't think that anybody said that. It it doesn't it just seem like a misrepresentation, a little bit of a broken telephone. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I think season one had more going for it than season two. Like it, uh, season one, Jesus, <laughs> episode one. Um, it's but but it did slow down a little bit, but only in the sense of like I rewatched episode one. So <laughs> take notes. Yeah, of um, course. And then I went to rewatch episode two, and I was like, I don't really know if I want to rewatch this one. Like. I fast oh, really? forwarded through a little bit of it. Oh no way! Oh, I really liked episode two. I thought it was super interesting. Just because I like, I like being able to go back to the Hamptons. Like that's fun. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just kind of like the experience, the caviar, and the the driving. It just it made me feel like I was a little bit nostalgic for old school rowdy when they would be like going out to the Berkshires. The Berkshires. <laughs> that's so true. No, like it was a fun episode. I enjoyed watching mm-hmm. it. I just didn't feel like I needed to watch it again. Mm, right like i really didn't i didn't feel like i missed anything whereas that's this, fair. when i watched the first episode again i actually was like picking up on other things that i feel like i missed because it was very fast. fast oh interesting can you think of anything that you like noticed the second time in the rewatch more just like, like the first t- 10 minutes i feel like they just like shoved so much at you like when yeah. the girls are talking about each other and then they show like the flash flash forwards you don't really like <laughs> take it in because you like haven't right. seen these people before yeah yeah, that's fair. Scott was even saying um, that he thought that we could, that they should have like changed the order of how they did it because he thought that they should have had the um, the intro with like the, all of the taglines kind of first. So you were like, okay, that's this person, that's this person, that's this person, and then did the like Jenna is like a boss bitch, or whatever, yeah, right? and like <laughs> Brian is the fun bubbly one, and <laughs> Luke is a vivacious. I just remember that because I loved vivacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, same. Yeah, the, but those were the two big things, and then there was the mm-hmm. ending of of um, the second episode that we were talking about, where like Jenna yeah. had bought everyone like lingerie, yeah, and Jessel's was not nice, um, yeah, and then she ran around making the biggest stink ever. It was oh so god. rude! I mean, now, oh my god. Okay, so yeah, so your your take on it is that it's rude because some people's take on it is that she was right, and I, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> it wasn't. I can understand, like, she clearly has a lot of insecurities, right? So, like, I yeah. can definitely understand when, like, you're like, oh, is this what you think of me? Like, you right. you think that I'm going to be in this, like, old matronly, like, dress. Yeah. yeah. But she could have, like, made one comment and then stopped sure. and not just, like, ran around the house being like, this is the ugliest thing. I don't know why anyone buy this. Like, why would you ever think this is nice? This is disgusting. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's just it. Like, as soon as you didn't like it when you first got it, like, you could have just like, kind of, like, left it at that, and that would have probably been good. Um, I guess because of, you're watching a reality TV show, like, part of it is that you are supposed to kind of, like, go through the motions, right? You're supposed to say yes to everything. You're supposed to, like, try on the thing. You don't like it. You react in person. You, like, let everybody know how you're feeling about it, and, like, that's the job. So I guess I can kind of understand that, but... Yeah, it definitely made me feel like super awkward kind of like having her make all those comments about it. And it's just like, well, then just don't come downstairs. Like, if you don't like it, that's totally fine. You don't have to like it. Like, that's on you. But don't come downstairs and be like, oh, look at how ugly this thing is. This is the worst. Yeah. Like, it's just, oh. it's so, like, someone bought that for you. And, like, I think yeah. she literally could have been like, oh, like, all the other girls got sexy and I got this. Like, you could have yeah. said that. And then you could have, like, yeah left it and not worn it if you don't feel yep. comfortable be like sorry like yeah. i don't like the way it makes me feel like exactly like i don't love this on me i don't think this is cute like thank you so much for the gesture but i'm good um yeah i, I'm I like, do think it was kind of interesting that it was like paired with like this kind of like through line throughout the episode is like you know the conversation about like her sex life her, with her like yeah. boy her boyfriend her partner, her boyfriend, her, her boyfriend. <laughs> Uh, you know the man that she's just living with randomly um her husband <laughs> the, father, the father of her two children um so i think that that was obviously like a big part of kind of also why we're like you know probably seeing her unravel in the way that she is um and the fact that the women just kind of like kept on coming back to that conversation too right like it comes up multiple times throughout the episode um yeah, and that, I can understand how you might feel a little bit awkward after that, and like just a little bit sensitive to everything. But yeah, 
no for sure and like look at the people and like she's gorgeous like all the women I actually while I was watching I was just like all these women are so beautiful so pretty oh my god like they're all like they're all gorgeous but like and then you know I think we've all felt insecure at times and like felt like our friends you know we might be envious of like the way that other people look and like I think a lot of people can relate to feeling that way but Mm -hmm. you don't need to you know basically insult someone else like in the process of going through that yeah for sure and like if she hadn't tried on the the outfit or whatever the flip um she wouldn't have been the only person that didn't feel it try it on right like jenna wasn't trying on her robe or whatever that she got as well right so it yeah it just kind of feels like it wasn't like you had to do that to kind of like be a part of the group yeah you just you just did that <laughs> what's funny too yeah. is like on watch what happens live when they do like the and he's like who's like the bitchiest or who's whatever right. i think he said who complains the most and they all said jessel um and then i oh, didn't catch so this gonna be a storyline i think so i didn't catch this oh, before no. but like when when they were talking about all the rooms and jess was like oh you know like uba's room's so pretty and jenna's room's so pretty and you know i got the kids room yeah mm. i know that was so random and like the i'm sorry this daughter's room is like gorgeous this daughter yeah. has like a big, bigger bed than probably i do like just yeah, like, it just bear- has a rainbow over it. It has oh. a rainbow over it. Like, what's wrong? And, like, of course, like, she has five bedrooms in her house. Like, of course, some of them are going to be for her three children. Like, that's not that unusual. Like, no, I know. I was, uh, and I was disappointed because yeah. I did really, really like her. And, like, I think, like, her sharing her, like, IVF journey, too, was, like, really then- vulnerable. And even her sharing, like, you know, that she hasn't really been intimate with her, her partner was, like, a vulnerable thing on her end. Um we'll see where it goes from here like i hope that's not like her only character trait in the show it was just kind of unfortunate how the ladies like handled that conversation i feel like they were just kind of like wow what i can't believe that that hasn't happened and then they just kind of like kept like coming back to it and like feeding it like it's feeding a dead horse or whatever but yeah and they're like well just go do it and it's like yeah yeah i'm sure if it has it's been a year like chances are there's probably reasons why it hasn't oh yeah yeah that nah, that was interesting. What about um Taviar Gate? How'd you feel about oh. that? <laughs> I thought that was super rude of everyone too. And then my first <laughs> thought was also like, I feel like in every housewife show, we we've been shown that caviar is like the uh, the penultimate yeah. like, food that you can ever get. Yeah, and the fact that these la- like I think this is like the first time I've ever seen on a housewife show people like reject <laughs> caviar. <laughs> yeah. Especially, it totally made me feel, oh, totally, totally, totally reminded me of, like, Heather Thompson and how she would have been, like, so obsessed with this meal. Like, she would have been so excited. <laughs> uh, and then, obviously, it also made me think about Kathy Hilton and her delicious-looking potato and caviar meal that she had with, um, with Kyle. Like, I guess that was last season. Was that season 12? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, that they had on their, like, TV dinner tables. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, no, no, I think they were having oh, it was a, a different real, one. at a real meal. Yeah, I think so. Um but yeah, that was amazing. I loved it. I don't know. I th- like okay. I get it. It is a little weird to like not offer Have, like, people legit food. food. Yeah, but also like it, if it's like four o'clock and you're gonna go for supper at seven and you've like hired like a person that's like a caviar caterer, I guess, to like come and make this like little like a moose bouche. Like you just thought it would be kind of cute to just do like one little thing, and then the, everybody's like well where else is the food like i need more food take me to provisions let's go get more food i don't know yeah i actually felt like the worst for the people like the caviar oh, yeah, people the cater- like the i thought caterers. that like the caterers yeah. like i thought it was really rude to like basically be like shit talking it in front of them right I thought that was come like all this way to like make this like strange little meal for you guys yeah <laughs> and, like, could, could, it's like their thing it's like oh it's on like and then like I think it was Sai who was like making fun of it that was on a potato chip or something but like clearly yeah. like that's their thing They're, like we've tried like it's we've tried different combinations and they, they yeah. said that that was like really good like I would try that I would but... try it I would not say no no I mean I'm, not, I'm in no position to be turning down caviar <laughs> no I I don't get the hype of caviar never like it doesn't it. sound good yeah I've never had it so I don't know yeah like, say, had, like, maybe the, the fake stuff that's on sushi but I don't think it's yeah <laughs> definitely not the real caviar no like a, a big draw of caviar really seems to be just the fact that it's like exclusive right and like <laughs> difficult to get yeah um, but then Comes again I'm like bar. yeah um, I just feel like it is also very quintessential like that was a very like rony moment like I yeah. could see 
like Ramona pulling that or something or like yeah. saying something weird about the chips. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't so. invite the elf. This is it. Like, are you, are you going to go get like the caterer to go make me something specifically for my dietary restrictions? Yeah. Or yeah. like Luann being like, ah, uh, hello from the lower level or something when she gets put <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> yeah. And well, even for me, like, I guess the thing is, if I had found out that there was going to be only caviar or caviar was going to be the thing that was served to me when I got to somebody's house and I was like, I'm not about it. I would have gone to provisions first. That would have been my like stop on the way to like go get myself a little snack before I came to your house so that I could be like fed and be like, well, you know, thank you so much, but I'm I'm full. I'm good. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to have any of this right now. Thank you. I, um, I just don't get it. But that's just it. Like a housewife does not think like a logical person. So I have to like remove myself from that (laughs) yeah well that's just it right like part of me is like when i'm going in here and i'm yeah you know even criticizing like sai for bringing like eight bags to the hamptons like yeah this is also kind of why we watch the show like we watch the show because it's people that live outside of kind of like at least normal realm conceptions of reality totally and we kind of watch it because they're a little bit out of touch like that yeah (laughs) so you know it's true. And one of my favorite moments, it kind of makes me think of this, is like when Jenna shows up, she's like the first person to come to Aaron's house in the Hamptons. She like shows up early and she's like, did I get any like special little presents for like being the first to arrive? <laughs> and I yeah. just love that. I thought that was like, A, that was so cute that like she just like said it like outright, like so plainly, like I would like special gifts for being here early. That would be <laughs> my preferred thing. I, I, I you know, sometimes like explain this early, I get special things. I don't know. Is that something that you could orchestrate for me? Oh, um, yeah. Aaron's obviously answer is, well, you can have some more caviar. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just uh, thought that was really funny. <laughs> uh, I saw an article like shortly after like she talked about like the what's it called? The the disease that she has. Um, yeah, I don't know how it's pronounced. I, w- I would not even try to pronounce yeah. it. But like basically it, it impacts like her hair and her teeth and her skin. And um, she talked a little bit about it on the show, but she kind of like expands upon it on this article. And like mm-hmm. it sounds like she had a really difficult upbringing, like between that, like so she like her she like had these like little tiny teeth basically and there was like gaps in them and She's had like 10 oral surgeries to basically get like implanted teeth and they had to do some like facial reconstruction because like parts of her like face weren't mm. um like weren't able to hold themselves up if you like took out her teeth and like you oh know she has like her eye like her eyelashes and her hair. Yeah. Um like that's hard. Yeah. She really you're, has had a hard time. Incredibly well adjusted considering like kind of all the like stuff that you've had to go go through. Like I don't know. I never knew. I mean, like, to be honest, like, I didn't really even know of her, which maybe is like a little <laughs> bit blasphemous. Um, when the show came, I think like she was like the person that everyone kind of knew a little bit for. more. But like, yeah. I wonder if people knew that about her. I don't her. think so. I don't think so. I think maybe if you because like I knew of her and like, I, you know, I was a big J. Crew fan. Like I thought that like, you know, I was excited for her to kind of come on the show, but I definitely didn't know. I didn't even know if she was a lesbian. And I think that was probably the thing that people knew the most about her mm-hmm. um, from before the show. So, yeah, I feel like I've already like learned so much about Jenna. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's really nice that she is so upfront about all of these things. Um, so, yeah, like I don't really understand the criticism and people thinking she's holding back. Like I know they're like, yeah. oh, you're not you're not saying the name of your girlfriend. Right. And, like, that's not OK. But like, yeah, you can tell it's because of kind of like past trauma where she basically got like outed by was it like the, the New York times Post. or the post the New York yeah Post. yeah you know yeah well and that's just it like she's you know and even Sai kind of like made a comment about it like oh uh, you're gonna meet my husband like how can i not like see like your side of your life um but it's just like I, i'm surprised that you don't see the difference in that right like outing somebody can be like a pretty like massive like thing in today's day and age so it's pretty different for her to like be revealing who her partner is than like you like talking about your husband unfortunately like we're not yeah no for sure and I mean like we'll see like is that the extent of what she's gonna put out there like I don't know so like again like I can't really like make any judgments based on two episodes but I think thus far just reading things beforehand I thought she was gonna be a lot more reserved than she was yeah, me too. And I, I was actually like quite pleasantly surprised by how much of her we have really gotten to see. Plus, we got to see our apartment. <laughs> That's true. And then, like, I think about it, and I'm like, what? Like, I don't think we 
Like, we got more of a backstory from Jessel. We got more of a backstory from Jenna. Yeah. That was kind of it. a little bit from Aaron, like, kind of. Yeah, a little bit of Aaron, like, around her marriage and stuff. But, like, I guess because Bryn was only in one episode, like, I don't really get, like, I don't know really anything about her still. Yeah. And Upa, I feel like, is kind of similar, too. Like, I don't think we have a huge amount of information. She loves bananas. Loves the the starfish and she's a banana. (laughs) No, she's a banana. She's not a banana. What? She's a banana. She's a banana. She's so many bananas that she's become a banana. <laughs> uh, lol. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. Got yeah. really good ratings. Um, yeah, I did see that the ratings dropped a lot in the second episode. Yeah. But it got like a hundred. Like what was it? Like 1.7 million views in the first for the first episode. So to like to drop that drastically, they're still probably doing pretty good overall. Like, when did they probably drop down to if they lost 24% that, like, quarter, lost quarter, <laughs> four, I, don't, I don't even know. Like, how, how much did you lose if you lost 25% of and, 1.7? Yeah. And then there's also streaming. Like, we watch it yeah. streaming, not That's just live. Like, most so... people probably are choosing to just tune in later or any, even if they're still, if they're getting it more than a million, they're still doing pretty well. Like, they shouldn't be too worried. That's true. And I think yeah. with my lack of calculations, they're still probably over a million. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so anyway. I guess we'll we'll see what's going to come. Um, some yeah. of the OG housewives, I think, have been, like, supportive. I saw Luann, like, tweeted to them or something. Oh, that's cute. Um, I love that. And then in other news, Bethany <laughs> Frankel and Jill have... Very conveniently, yeah, reconnected after 13 years the same week. Ah, that this when they came out? out. <laughs> <laughs> they were just uh, like, Now is the time, unrelated the time. to what's happening. Be that hatchet, let's just go for it. Let's be friends again. <laughs> yeah, are we not deeply skeptical of the time? Uh, <laughs> I just think that they like they've both just finally gotten so thirsty that they're like, Whatever. Let's just go for it. Well, Bethany specifically, because I think she was really the one holding out and like, you know, reserving her friendship and reserving her any kind of like, you know, conversations from between her and Jill. And obviously she uh, waited for it to be able to be on her podcast and for her to be able to monetize it. Yeah. Uh, And it was like, I didn't watch it. Yeah. I'm going to. I heard it was like really brutal. It was like they like go back and hash out like a lot, like every fight they've ever had. Oh, Um, okay. That sounds pretty interesting, actually. I'm not gonna lie. (laughs) Like I, I think it was Danny Pellegrino where he was like saying, uh, you know, at first he was like really excited for it, and then like by the end (laughs) of it, he's like, oh god, I kind of understand why we like stopped. You know, yeah, rebooted Roni. Like that was so difficult and hard and like heavy. Oh. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued for sure. The only thing that I had heard that they had talked about was they kind of like decided that filming at Bobby's funeral had been like forced upon them by Bravo. And I don't know if that's accurate. Like, that's what a lot of people that. are saying. Yeah, apparently, um, like Jill didn't know she didn't sign anything. Right. Um, but didn't they like pub, didn't they like already kind of talk about this a long they time ago? They talked about this multiple times. Yeah. So they, they talked, Dorinda brought it up in the reunion. I don't know if it was that season or the season after, but Dorinda did bring it up in the season it happened or after one of the Um, Whenever Dorinda was on, not on Bethany's side, basically, Dorinda decided to bring it up at the reunion. Um, and Andy said that Jill had written to them and invited them to film because obviously, you know, it was like a big moment. And, you know, Bobby and Jill had been a big part of the, you know, initial conception of this show. Um, and then on Ultimate Girls Trip season two, when Jill and Dorinda are together, Dorinda brings it up again. And I think I think Jill at that point says that she didn't know that they were there and like didn't know that like Bethany was filming, basically. I think so. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, Bethany is just <laughs> You know what's funny? Every single podcast who talked about Bethany, I think, goes, oh, Bethany. Yeah, I know. It's such a fall from grace. Like, I feel like we, like, you know, in season 10, we... Season 10? Season 11, I think. That was her last season. Yeah, season 10, yeah. I think she comes back. Season 10 is the one where she and um, Carol are fighting. 
And yeah. that's Carol's last season or season 11 is Bethany's last season after the whole Luann relapse and everything. Um, and like, I just feel like she like went out like at a good time and a good place. It was like clearly her time to be done with the show. She needed to be over it. And like, had that been how she left her legacy with Roni and like Bravo and Housewives and reality TV in general, like that would have been great. It would have been perfect. But like, her getting onto TikTok and Instagram and Reels and like talking constantly, incessantly, and like now they she wants to start a reality TV uh, union and you know all this stuff and like you know we're all for the the Screen Actors Guild and all the stuff that they're doing and the writers and everything, but it's just like why are you becoming the advocate for a reality TV union and like why do you just need to spend all of your time talking to us like we're done yeah. Well, that's it. And like Reality Bites talks about this as well, because like they're yeah. actually like executive pre- producers. Yeah. And they're like, you know, yes, agreed. Reality shows should, you know, have more yeah. rights and like yeah. not be taken advantage of. Yeah. But like she doesn't mention anywhere all the other background people mm-hmm. making the show happen. Like she's not yeah. advocating for them. Right. And she's like for the reality stars, the residuals yeah. that she can be getting from these shows. <laughs> yeah, literally. And literally. you know, we could do like a whole podcast like just on Bethany. Cause yeah, like we love yeah. Bethany. Like yeah. I think that she was iconic New yeah. York. She, like I can't she felt like the breath of fresh air, right? Like she felt like so just different from everybody else she was yeah she's so straight up she like led to so many iconic moments but (laughs) it's more just like the biting the hand that feeds you and like i feel like just being so hypocritical recently where she's like both you know kind of shitting on bravo and just like denouncing the housewives but then also like literally has a rewatch podcast yeah and continues over and over and over and over again to talk about you know roni yeah it's just like you gotta that's pick just, a lane that's just it and like thinking that she can come on to like the, into the podcast sphere and like bring something so unique and original to podcast when like all she's doing is like bringing celebrities and bringing like special guests on to like talk about episodes like why does that make you a groundbreaking you know bravo podcast when there are literally like hundreds of amazing bravo podcasts out there that like we actually want to consume and actually might be able to give us some insight into things. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's very, it's very interesting. But yeah, let us know if you think that we should listen to that and recap it for you. We'll take one for the team. <laughs> take one for the team. Let you know how it was. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah. What are your thoughts on, on Roni? Like, <laughs> are you liking it? Are you disappointed? Are you going to keep watching? Yeah. We will be. <laughs> so if you yeah. are, we will watch it for you. Yeah, we'll tell you all about it. Don't we'll tell you worry. all about it. We'll let you know how it is. <laughs>